now. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We are doing a re-recording of our summer library evaluation and story time grant workshop that got cut off um, last week. So we wanted you to have this information, so we're making sure to re-record it. I am Mary Beth Schaefer. I am the assistant director and the continuing education consultant for CKLS. Patty? Good morning. I'm Patty Collins. I'm the youth services consultant at CKLS, and I'm here to answer your questions and help you with your problems. Thank you. All right. So you should see my screen now. Um, I had the wrong thing up. <laughs> That's okay. Everything's going to work out great. <laughs> Let's start with the summer library program evaluation. Um, this is due on September 10th, but you can fill it out anytime your summer library program has finished. Just make sure you meet that deadline. September 10th because this is part of your um, CKLS 2020 system plan standard, the fifth standard there, which is the summer library program standard. So make sure you meet that deadline. Patty? The only thing really different about this year's evaluation is it's asking for um, activities that you might have done either outreach or online. Um, and we might consider um, the outreach is if you did a take and make program rather than having an in-house program, which is certainly okay, um, those, those um, statistics will be counted under the online slash archived. So the um, top of the evaluation is very much the same. It's just asking for your library and your program start and end dates. That hasn't changed. And then um, there are three questions that have been requested by um, the LSTA, which is Library, Ser Library Services and Technology Act, which is a the federal grant program that is providing um, the materials, the summer library program manual, and your membership to the collaborative summer library program. And those questions are um, uh, necessary for them to evaluate the grant. And then we get into the meat of your summer library program evaluation. Um, the first part of it is talking about your uh, number of readers. And this is your, the number of children that you either had sign up or the ones that show up all the time. And you'll see that there are several categories where you need to figure out the age of that child or, or um, user. And there's an early lit, a school age, a young adult category, an adult category, and then the number of, of uh, users using um, materials for the blind and physically handicapped. So those would be, be talking books, materials, or other services that you might provide in addition. And so um, they want to know that question. So that user is gonna appear, say it's a, it's a child who's using talking books. So they're gonna be counted there, but they also might be counted in the talking books um, section. So that's the one place where you might repeat a number. So that's just the number of readers you might have. Then for the summer library program events, this looks a little different. Um, you'll see under 3A, you'll see early literacy children, and then it says in-person events, and then letter B is online and archived events. And basically each of those age categories, early literacy, children, young adults and adults and families are all going to have an option for in-person events and for online and archived events. So if you had a take and make event, your letters would, your um, concept, excuse me, let me start again. Your um, numbers are going to be included in one of the online or archived events um, categories. If you did in-person programming, which is also certainly fine, um, and additional to take and make, you would have things in all the boxes. Now, the one thing that's the fail safe for this form is if, um, if there's an asterisk next to it, um, you must use, uh, put a zero or something in that space. So um, that red asterisk is the, is the um, fail safe. So we make sure that you get all of your um, answers included in your, in your document. So if you don't have a number there, please put in a zero. So that is the number of programs that you do. That's what letter three or number three is. And so that's the number of in-house programs you did, plus the number of online story times or the number of take and makes that you did. 
and they make up that um, section C, uh, section three. For um, section four, which is the total attendance, this is where you're going to add the number of people together. So if you had four story times and the same kids came to each one, those kids are counted each time they attend. So four story times up in, say, um, letter 3A, and then on 4A, it's going to be, okay, there were 12 kids, and they're counted each time they came. So 12, 24, 36, 48 is actually what goes in to letter 4A, would go into that category. And if they brought their teenage brother or sister, that number goes um, in, let's see, four, in 6A. You'll see where Mary Beth didn't put a number and immediately um, the, uh, um, oh, sorry, back up Mary Beth, up to, up to teen or young adult A, there we go. Um, and if, if you don't put a number in the form, it's gonna uh, click you back out when you get to the very end and it's gonna go up with that great big red box to say, this is a required question. So anytime you see that, just put in a zero if there's nothing for you to add there. At the end of this section, Mary Beth, if you'll float down to the end, you'll see that um, there is no family section in the attendance, but there is a family section in the pro number of programs that you do. And so we do need you to be looking at guessing at who's in your room and putting those numbers there. So um, you don't have to ask every child how old they are. That's, that's not a big deal. Um, you can kind of guess that, you know, oh, I know Johnny's not in school, then he gets added in that category. And if, if it's truly just a guess, or if you do not know, but everybody lumped together under school-aged children in both your attendance and in your programming. That's your, that's your fail safe for me, because on your state report, that's where they're gonna all show up. And that's the age group that is covered by the LSTA grant, which you were talking about earlier. That is correct. Then um, section number five is the cost of summer library. Some of you might not have spent money this year. You have um, pulled things out of, your, out of your cupboards and got creative, um, some because we don't want to shop, sometimes because it was inconvenient or unsafe to shop. So uh, with materials and performers, uh, both of those categories may end up being zero this year. If you did pull things out of your cupboard, the zero is fine. Um, you're still, even if you don't show evidence of spending money here, if you complete the requirements, you still get the grant the, the meet the standard and still get the money for that standard. Uh, performers, um, many of us had to cancel that performer um, performer event, but perhaps some of you paid for something that has yet to happen. And I'm going to let you decide. In my mind, I'm paying for summer library, and that's where I would put it. But you may have had to pay the $200 to hold on to the magician, but he's actually not going to perform until November or February if there's a chance for, it to, for you to do it live. So if you have money going out, it needs to go in, in some category somewhere. And then in the last um, section, the number six, donated prizes, um, and that's the total value of what something would cost. So here we're looking for if you got um, coupons from the local ice cream store or if Pizza Hut sent you coupons. Um, what I always did when, when I was in your shoes, I would call the location and say, give me the approximation of what a, what a small pizza would cost that, to match the, the, the coupons that you gave me. And the number of those that I gave away, I did the math and figured out, okay, 599 times 60 coupons, that's a, approximately $360. And that would show what the, the, the commitment is from your community. And that's why this is important. This also might be including, you know, if you received a $25 check from your local Rotary, or if you received um, $100 in cash from a, from a family, um, all of those would go together in that donated prizes and materials. In, in many libraries, that money is, is um, kind of put together and used as programming seed money for all year long. And we do understand that it might not turn around to be spent right back on summer library. It might be programmed seed money. And then, so Patty, I have a quick question. If, um, since this year is different and um, a lot of libraries had to pay for their prizes, which are normally donated, 
they would put that in the cost for materials this year, correct? That is correct. Any money that you spent out um, would go in that materials cost. Okay. And that could be books you bought as prizes, or it could be um, your, your trip to Walmart or to the dollar store for craft materials. Thank you. And then make sure that you put your signature at the bottom and um, prove that you're not a robot there at the bottom there. Not a robot, not a robot. Okay, that was fun. That was fun. Okay, now we are going to talk about the 2020 Storytime Grant. Yay! Yay! So because 2020 is the year that it is, we realized that the original um, outline for this grant is not really achievable with what we are able to do in our libraries. So we have um, redesigned our outline just a little bit. It's still within the spirit of the original grant, which was laid out in the 2020 system plan, but we're trying to make it so that your libraries can um, earn this grant. Yes, Ms. Gale. Um, I visited with the executive board about the changes that needed to be made and so this is not something that the three of us came up with on our own. Um, they agreed that the circumstances needed us to make more options available to libraries. Thank you, Gail, for that clarification. Yes, um, we are very cognizant of the challenges that you're facing right now. And so we are trying to um, make those requirements reachable and attainable for your library. Okay. So what we found with um, uh, many of you had already planned spring story time. And uh, according to the, the um, annual grant, it has a um, number of programs that you need to do for a full year. Well, basically we did, we did cut those numbers in half um, for each of those, those categories. But um, we realized that you started to do things in the spring and we realized that you were done really quickly because you weren't in your building any longer. There are a handful of our libraries that were able to uh, move, morph to online and continue like nothing happened. But frankly, that was um, few and far between and um, there is no judgment whatsoever if you were not able to do that. Um, frankly, the night that, that Gail said we were gonna close our doors for a week, I came in and gathered up materials because I was going to do story times for all of you. So you just have something to post. And I got to tell you, that stuff never even got out of my car for three weeks, <laughs> let alone into my house to do anything with. So, um, so it's, um, we understand how overwhelming that was. I applaud those of you that were able to, to continue, but there is no judgment for the fact that you didn't. Um, it's our goal um, by the modifications that we recommended and the um, executive committee approved is that even in a situation where there are very few or some places no children available during what would be traditional story time, this would be the year that every library in our system would be able to get this grant and there is money planned for that to happen because we understand that meeting in person may either not be safe uh, for the users or the library staff. Um, there may be restrictions in place that would not allow it, not today and certainly not in, in two or three weeks when things get worse or better, because we have no prediction of what's gonna happen. None of us thought we would be here having this conversation, but this is where we are. So what we came up with was an opportunity for you to share content on a consistent basis that is not necessarily content you have to make. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about filming story times and those things at the very end of today's session. So stay tuned for that part. But if you'll look at option B, it says at least eight weeks of consistent weekly active online sharing, either on your website, your social media, or through email. And it may be content that you film, it might be a come go come to my garden and let me tell you a fairy tale, or it might be a, um, a final board that you have created and, and recorded. Um, it might be content that you um, get through another library site um, or through the CKLS Youth Services Facebook page. 
the one thing that did happen during those early weeks of COVID-19, um, Patty and Diane went into super speed mode collecting ideas for Summer Library 2020 and beyond. Things that we thought would be shareable and easy for you to share out that your families could do at home and hopefully as a family. Um, we've tried to avoid sharing anything that would be um, items that would be hard to find. So we're looking for normal household things in um, the content that we share. And the, the biggest part of this is um, the content has to adhere to current copyright permissions and um, those copyright permissions are changing daily now. And finally, it has to occur between what's the traditional story time year, which is September 1, and December 31, and that's traditionally fall story time session time. Um, we figured we'd put summer library program to bed, and now it's the beginning of the school year. So that's where this content needs to be shared. Thank you. And yeah, that timeline is important. Um, look here for what's required for your size of library. Seven is the minimum for linking and gateway, 10 for service centers, and 12 for major, major service centers. So that will help you um, kind of plan out your fall story time. Um, starting September 1st through December 31st, you should have plenty of time to make that requirement. You can do an in-person. You will need to um, submit a story time flyer to end the application. I'll show you where that is in the application. Let me do a preview here. So the instructions are fully laid out in the top of the uh, story time grant with the original at the bottom in case you're curious. We also have your email address to start out just like most of our grants um, require. Choose your library, choose your category. And then the name or type of your program, that is if you're doing a theme, uh, your fall story time is all about animals, then you can do that. Or you can just say library 2020 story time. Be as creative as you want, but we're just trying to get um, a name that we can attach to this grant so we know that it's yours. The grant is for $300. Um, you can't get more than that for the grant, so I, and I wouldn't request less than that. That's the, that's the amount, that's for $300. And then the person responsible for the grant, because that's who we're gonna contact um, if we don't have the report um, by the end of the year. So if that's you, make sure that's you. If that's somebody else, make sure we have the right person and their correct email who we send the check to or make the direct deposit to. And then you're describing your programs, what you're planning on doing. Um, it, it can be September 1 this, um, September 7th this, or it can be we are going to do an eight week program covering a different animal each week with crafts and um, a take home craft and a related story. Yes, Ms. Gale. Could I then, if I'm taking advantage, oh, oh by the way, um, Jane Q. Librarian here. Um, <laughs> if I'm taking advantage of that option, could I write in here that story time will run from the 1st of September so that I get my right number of, of um, required sessions in? So say the 1st of November, I'm a smaller library. And then in my program description, could I say that we're going to share content through our Facebook page every week. Will that cut it, or do I need to um, elaborate on that? Uh, this is Patty, and, and no, that will, that will tell me enough. And remember that no matter what size of your library, for choosing the go to go the online, online route, you need to do eight consistent weeks. Thank you. That would be, um, so that doesn't matter what size your library is. If you're doing an online program, the very smallest, the linking and gateways are required to do at least seven sessions. Now, John Q. Librarian, I know the next question you're going to ask me, so I'm going to go ahead and answer it. You're going to say, I'm so excited. I sent my story time flare. I'm ready to go. I did my first few sessions, and then my county health department said no in person activities that are not absolutely essential. My board has made the decision to take us back a phase to curbside service only. What do I do? And Patty's going to tell you, first of all, don't worry. Um, you need to make sure that your patrons are safe, but you should have a fail safe plan. So 
Um, what I would do if I were you is I would immediately trod right over to the CKLS Youth Services Facebook page and I would start sharing and choose a time, uh, make an announcement on your Facebook page and perhaps send it out through your email list to your patrons that says, look for new activities every Thursday at 10 o'clock. So it's okay if I had a plan and COVID totally has to change that plan it's okay now do i have to resubmit the grant or do i have to let anybody know at ckls that this happens yes please tell me please tell me um we, we we need to know for a couple of reasons we are doing a i think we're doing an excellent job right now of watching what um the trends are in all 17 counties of the libraries that we serve but we don't know what might have happened at midnight we might know it not know it for three or four days and so please let us know that your library has made a decision to step back a phase or reduce your hours or whatever it is, and also say, hey, I need to switch to my alternate story time plan. I'm gonna switch to online sharing, or I have a couple of things in my pocket I'm gonna pull out and I'm gonna see if that will get us through this little bump. And do I want, if you wanna switch back before the end, that's certainly fine. But it, the, the important part is communicating with us of what's going to happen. We Last call that the hybrid. Yeah, we call Last that the hybrid time. plan. Yeah. I have one more question. Okay. Okay. About, 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 just in case my plans go crazy, um, I don't really have internet at home. So if my library closes, I have a smartphone. But if my library closes, and the county health department shut us down, do I have to go into my library to do this online sharing? Absolutely not. Wherever you can share it from. And frankly, if you don't have a smartphone and your library has to be shut completely down and you can't get in it, the one phone call that I need you to make is to me because I'm going to help you in some way or another make sure that you continue to serve your patients. Our goal of this is to make this be the year that you can focus on your health, the health of your patrons, and making sure that your library is the safest it can be and if it means that things have to look a little different then that's where we can step up for you okay i have some more questions sorry okay that's, that's i want to know here. everything about this um, <laughs> well, well good okay. then you can tell then you can tell your children's assistant <laughs> yes yeah um okay so we really don't have any kids in our town um so is it okay to do this? It almost feels like cheating. Well, you might not have kids in your town that come to your library, but I bet you that Mary Beth can help guide you through your census information and show you that you do have people that you are serving in your town. Okay. And you have to remember that um, during this weird time, there may not be kids that are uh, that usually live in your town, but they might be living there at this time too, because right. grandma's house is safer than living in a city. Yep. So think about um, think about your community. I know we hear a lot that, that we know our communities, and so there's limitations of things we can or cannot do, but think of how your community has had to change and adapt in these last four months um, things are very different and people are moving to rural areas because they feel safer. And um, so, so think of who you, uh, who you are, who you can serve. And if you, share, if you share on Facebook, you're going to reach a different people. Maybe one of your friends or followers on Facebook is a grandmother and she sees your story time and then shares it with her grandkids. Okay. That's, yep. That still counts. I also wanted to get in here real quick before I forget that when we look at your application, we're going to look at your description and your date range to make sure that it you're giving yourself enough time to meet the requirements. So if you say you're going to start your your story time problem on November 29th, we know you're not going to have enough time to get your story times in. So that's one thing we're looking at. That's why we're asking. We want to see what your plan is to make sure that you are setting yourself up for success. I have one last question about this, and that is that um, uh, buying all the supplies to keep our patrons safe, all the COVID things that we've needed, has really kind of pulled from our budget. 
can I use the $300 in a story time grant to buy um, more adult fiction? No, this grant is specific for story time. It can be spent for story time books. It can be spent for story time materials, craft supplies. Um, if you're doing in person and you choose to do snacks, it can be for that. It can also be spent towards staff time if you hire someone special outside your okay. normal staff. But it has to be story time related. If you're reading your kids the next John Grisham, we're going to question that a little bit. <laughs> it might Thank be you. a little long for them. Um, <laughs> and, and we also have to remember that historically, story time has been, it's only for the little tinies. And, and it really isn't. And in many of our rural communities, they adapted a long time ago and realized that the kids getting off the bus at four o'clock on a Monday afternoon are actually who they're serving because they don't have preschoolers because preschoolers are taken with mom to the next town to be put in daycare while she is working. But the kids who truly are in town is when the bus arrives at four o'clock in the afternoon. And so that's when they've adapted to doing story time. And, um, and then you also have to remember that story time can also be a family of so when you when you're thinking i'm thinking of activities that might be appropriate for a whole family and you'll notice in some of the activities that um, diane and i will share through our facebook page um, that really do not really are not just for a preschooler but there are things that could be adapted for a preschooler because they're truly looking at that grade school target because i know many of your libraries that's who the kids do you do have because I can see those numbers on summer library, but then the numbers drop when it comes to story time, because there's that, that idea of story time is traditionally held for those that are three to five years old or for pre-kindergarten. And that's not necessarily the case in your town. All right, let's move to the story time flyer. The requirements for the flyer are listed there in the grant. Um, it needs to be print or post ready. So we need to have it proofread um, you need to have capitalization where it should be capitalized. You should have your contact information for your library, full library name, um, full phone number, full address, and the person to ask for on the phone. So contact Angel at the Delphus Public Library with the contact information there. Also, um, you can say follow us on Facebook and you can give the link to your Facebook page. You need to have your date range. If it's um, every Monday at 4 p.m. starting September 1st to November, I don't know what the next Monday is in November, November 11th, put that on the flyer. You don't need um, day specific information on the flyer. This is going to be your um, flashing sign that's gonna get people's attention. It's going to give them the basic outline for your story time. And then the more detailed information can be posted on your Facebook page or you can give it to them when they come and ask for more information. I'm gonna show you a um, couple samples of some story time templates, which if you need one, um, Patty um, sent them out an email and we can send those out again. I will link them in the archive on the CQLS um, archives page. So you can see here, it has the name of the library. It has the what they're advertising, fall story time, and the date range for it, and who it's for. It's fun for all ages, so you should know that this is a family story time. So it's telling how to participate. You check the library's Facebook page for a video or story activity. New videos will be posted every Wednesday at 4 p.m. And then at the bottom, you will see the contact information for that library. Ooh, and we're in New York, New York, awesome. That's where Seth loves to travel. <laughs> and then you can see here's another um, version of it. This one, again, has the name of the library right at the top, what it's about, what's going to happen, what age group this is for. And then this one gets, says Wednesdays at 11 from September 16th through November 18th. And then they gave, went ahead and gave the themes for each session. This would look like many of yours traditional in-house story programs. So if um, John Q patrons started off um, attending story time, but we got to week number four, which is community helpers, I would have something in my in my bag of tricks because that's the week that County Health Department said, I gotta do something else. 
And so for those remainder weeks, I may or may not find an activity that matches, or I just might pull something that's um, shared content from Seek Hillis Youth Services and go ahead and share that out. And the one thing that I do is put a note ahead saying, we miss you at story time, um, but here's something fun. Be watching for new activities every Wednesday at 11 because you've already planned for that time. So that's when you need to be ready to dump those things. What's really nice about places like Facebook, however, is you can set on the very first Wednesday that that's gonna happen and actually schedule all of those coming posts. You and can you do can it. use content that Tequilas has already shared because we're gonna start sharing the first of August. Yeah, so if you do the Facebook online option, you can spend one day and get them all planned out, set up, and then say, I'm gonna publish this one September 16th, this one September 23rd, this one September 30th, and go for the whole year. And you're set, you're good to go. Nice. That's the easy I, button. In the chat, and this is Gail Santi, not um, Jane Q Librarian. <laughs> in the chat, I posted a link to the CKLS Youth Services Facebook page where you're gonna be able to find all this amazing content. I will add that to the video. Follow that page. Yes, thank you. And then this third one is more for a take and make story time. Again, has the name of the library at the very top, has what they're talking about and the date range, bottom has the contact information at the bottom, and then information. You will notice that none of these have paragraph um, letter form on the flyer because a flyer is something somebody should be able to read quickly and understand the information. It should be quick, simple, and to the point. Okay. And you'll see on this flyer that um, at the top it says the library's Facebook page for a story video every Tuesday at 1, and then it says take and make, stop by each week, get a new packet um, through November 30th. So there's a, a combination of two activities happening here, and they may or may not, um, they may or may not ever look at your Facebook page. But this, this take and make can separate from it. So those that are truly screen free, because there's probably some screen gonna be happening for, for school kids now. Mm -hmm. um, so if you truly wanna be screen free, you can do a take and make like some of you have done over summer. And there's no, there's no requirement to go watch a video anywhere. It can all be um, self-contained in that little packet. All right, so that's the story time grant and the flyers that go along with it. If your flyer is not attached to the grant, it's not a complete application. Okay, Patty, let's move on to, let me see if I can get in focus. Let's move on to recording story times for online publication. Okay, this is the question of the year for public libraries, um, truly from midnight on March 13th, it seems like this was, this was the thing. So, mail's on the elevator. <laughs> by the way, the mail's on the elevator. <laughs> but we are working, so so now you know. So, um, as I said, immediately I went into um, quick time mode, and I thought I was just going to be all that. And um, I had been watching the internet very, very closely in the the week leading up to um, as soon as the first Kansas case hit. I started to focus on how we were going to continue to serve. So I uh, started watching the gurus all over the place and I noticed that some of the publishers and some authors who we'll get there in a second started to offer up um, free story times and say, you can record my book if you want and send them out to your patrons. Now, if you'll, if you'll recall pre-COVID, um, there were principals and school teachers doing this and you had heard me say that that's not okay because that's actually an infringement on copyright uh, when you when you grab any book off the shelf um, you see an author and an illustrator but the thing that trumps it all is the publishing company because they own the right to the words and the pictures even though there's an author and illustrator who get the royalties from it um, the publishing company actually owns the, the copyright. And so on Sunday morning, the 15th of March, Mo Willem says, join me at noon every day. We're going to read and tell the story. Well, Mo Willems is big enough that he could do that. <laughs> um, but um, a single um, indie author could not get away with that because their publishing company would have gone, no, I don't think so. <laughs> um, but right now, 
the world has opened. Um, in response to people like Mo Willems and Dan Brett and some of those who right off the bat said, you can, you can record my stuff, you can share my stuff. So the um, publishing company said, okay, we're gonna open up permissions. And initially they opened them up through the end of April. It was April 30. And then it became abundantly clear in the following week that um, school was going to be out for the rest of the year for everyone, not just campus, who was the first to do that. And so once we were truly out, they extended those to June 30th, figuring um, most East Coast schools go to school till somewhere between the 10th and the 20th of June. So they extended the permissions to June 30th. I'm not exactly sure if it wasn't um, if it wasn't peer pressure or if it wasn't the sheer amount of content that was being shared, but um, the publishers agreed to extend that publisher um, permissions again, and most of them expire now either on August 31st or September 6th or 7th, whenever. Because, because that's when school will be in session. So um, yes, um, September 7th is, is Labor Day, and on the 8th, again, East Coast schools start school after Labor Day. That's not necessarily the ha how it happens in Kansas, but, um, and frankly, they're looking at where the majority of the people are, and most of our publishing houses happen to be um, in New York City. So <clears throat> they extended those to get us through Summer Library, so I saw many of you do some amazing story times. You either had guest readers, you did them yourselves, you did them as little plays, and you've seen a few little attempts that, that CKLS Youth Services has done. Um, with our with our own original things, but simplest form, we don't own those copyrights. And um, Gail and I have talked a lot this week about how we um, do not understand legalese. We're trying to interpret what they're saying. I'm going back to where I was in March and saying it's not okay. As best as we understand. We will not have those permissions to do with as we please for the period of time that our story time session from September 1 to December 31st exists. There's a, there's a misunderstanding about libraries and publishers being best friends. But you have to think in terms of when a, <laughs> there we go, Ms. Gale, in terms of, in terms of the publishers and libraries, yes, we initially probably, as a group, buy a whole lot of books, maybe as many as they sell to individual users at the beginning. But remember, we buy the book and we circulate it 50 to 100 times, whatever it is. We keep it for its life longer than some book people who collect um, do. So, at the very beginning, yeah, we might be the reason that John Grisham or David Baldocki or, or Stephen King is at the top of the bestseller list because we have pre-ordered for our library, as have those collectors or, or users. But think, um, we don't buy as many paperback books. Users buy more paperback books because they're in the airport or they're in the bookstore or they're in Walmart. and are the hardcovers that we buy last for their, the life of the book. And a lot of them aren't weeded until there's nothing left of them. So we aren't the market for a publisher. No, we are not. And that, that idea that they couldn't survive without us is... Uh -huh. um, it's wrong. It's only, uh -huh. it's only, it's only to, to a very, very small degree. Um, and they don't need us. Not like we need them. And so this opportunity to set and read a print book and film it, to me still says that I'm infringing on the copyright unless I have express written permission and I follow their expectations in showing that video. And it might be, you can have it up for um, one week and you have to pull it down um, and get, get rid of any evidence that's there. And we know that once it's on the internet, it's hard to get rid of. Um, we must make sure that they have um, credit for that work, not just the author and illustrator, but Candlewick Publishing or Harper College or whoever it is. They need that credit too because they, again, they 
actually own that item and I'm borrowing it. Yes, Mary Beth. What are my alternatives? Are there ways to still post story times that are approved by the publisher without having to go through the rigmarole? Yes, there are. Um, there are a few places that have been um, um, collating stories for a long time and I've shared them in different times. Last year, you, uh, you were heavy sharers of story time from space. And those were a lot of original content things that they were sent with or to the space, space station. And they're actually read by story time, by uh, um, astronauts on the space station, watching their little book float around. That's a whole lot of fun. Um, I'm going to share a couple of things with you. Um, story uh, Storyline Online is one of my favorites. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Storyline Online is a um, um, curated by the publishers, but it's all famous people reading books. And just this morning, I saw something I hadn't seen for quite a while. You'll look at this just added feature. Looky here. We even have books shared in Spanish. And so they are trying to respond to the need. When I first started watching this site, and it's been years ago, um, there were maybe 40 books out there, but this is a partnership between the publishing company and the, um, the Screen Actors Guild. So this is a way to get famous people a chance to um, share something. This is their volunteer work, you might say, um, but it's also something for them to add to their resume. And um, I've shared this, shared Arnie the Donut many, many times with you. Um, this is Chris O'Dowd from IT Crowd, reads Arnie the Donut, and it gave me a whole nother appreciation. So um, you can see there, there are a lot of book options here. Um, to choose from. There's more than the eight that you would need to share. So here is a weekly um, story time um, opportunity. And you will see it is um, the actor sharing the book. Sometimes the book is held just like you do at story time. And sometimes they have the benefit of using the animated version that the publishers have created. So um, the, oh. when they post on Facebook, do they just find a link for it and post it on Facebook? Or is there anything more they need to do? There's more than they need to do. I might say, hey, this is one of Miss Patty's favorite stories. Um, or if I'm going to follow my, if I'm going to follow my original plan that said, oh, this was, this was pumpkin week, I'm going to look and see if I can find a pumpkin story and share. It was supposed to be today. We were going to do this. I've saved that for next year. I want to share with you and um, Harry the Dirty Dog by Betty White. And there if you go. don't know who Betty White is, I bet your mom and grandma do. <laughs> I mean, it can be as simple as that. Um, Excellent. The, um, many of the publishing companies also have sites that you can use. Let's see here. Are you seeing Simon Kids? Not yet. Okay. Yeah, you stopped sharing. Oh, oh well, see, there we go. There we go. This is Super Buns, Read and Learn with Simon Kids. Now I'm gonna teach you an easy trick here. If you look down in your, on your um, screen, you'll see that the length of time on that share, you'll know that that's a full story. Because some of these are trailers for their company. This happens to be from um, Simon Kids' site and from their site directly, I'm going to be able to watch the entire video. Somebody reading a book to me. Um, when I back up on their page, you'll see I go straight to Simon Kids. Um, I actually just um, Google Simon Kids and it will take me to their YouTube channel. And you'll see right here, it still says tune in Tuesdays and Thursdays, 10 a.m. Eastern. They're still recording things right now. They may continue to share that content that you may be able to borrow. But then you see right down here, you have um, lots of opportunities. Here we have, a, we have a, a writing workshop. And here we see by our length of time, this is gonna be a full story Stella by Starlight 
um, group. Um, so you see that there are options available to us. If you see a 51 second, 51 second item, that's going to be a trailer for the book. So it's going to be their commercial. But you see that you have options available. And then you have things like PTV. Um, this is a this is the Pete the Cat site. And you'll see that you've got printable activities, songs and videos. Um, and then if you go directly to Harper Kids, which is the publisher of Pete the Cat, you can actually find the stories where you can actually hear the entire read or hear the entire story. But see, you have video straight off of PTV that you can share as your content. So um, you are not limited to, um, you're not limited to sharing a craft, you're not limited to sharing a, um, a science activity. You can share a story and that be how you start your story. So um, these are the these are the, the the foolproof ways that you can do this, and you can go out and find your own content if you care to, or you can rely on us to help you. I have a feeling that what will happen is once this gets started, you're going to find whose Facebook page that you like the best because they're sharing the kinds of things that you want. And I have to share, to tell you, if you're watching the You Services Facebook page. I'm sharing content that you are all sharing. I'm bringing it back and sharing it out and going, this is a great idea I saw at the Glen Elder Library or at Russell Public or whoever, because you find better things than I do. Um, and what Diane and I have had the time to do is, is curate a whole list of things that are going to help you be able to provide <laughs> science, craft, or story things. And our goal is that we will publish something three days a week and you'll decide which one of those three or all three that you want to share. But the deal is a consistent share for an eight week period of time, not sharing for eight days and being done. Yes, Ms. Gale. What if our library doesn't have a Facebook page? If you don't have a Facebook page. Can I get trained to do that? Yes, of course you can. Um, contact me and we'll set up a time to do training. It may be online, it may be in person, depending on how the schedule works. But the other options are, um, you could, if you have a website, you could share it on your website. Or if you have an email list where you send out to your patrons, you can send it out to an email list as well. Thank you. And you can use other forms of social media. If you're a Twitter person, if you're an Instagram person, you can share those, those um, links straight out in those other, other formats. Because some communities are, are Facebook all the time, but maybe you're trying to reach younger users with teen content, so you want to move to a different social media platform. And, and trust me, I am not up on all those social media platforms, but I will educate myself if that's what you find that you need. And if you're using whatever um, online format you're using, please make sure you let us know in the application. And if you have to change it, let us know by email or phone call, just because we want to see what you're doing. We're excited about it. We want to see what you're doing. Okay, so that is the summer library evaluation, the story time grant, and posting story times online. Um, Patty, do you have anything else to add? Just that you're doing awesome. Um, give yourself a break. As I said at the very beginning, don't worry because we will work this out. And, and just to let you know, you know, last night I had two different conversations. Um, one library wanted to do something, but wanted to check and see if they could do it that way. And the other library had to say, hey, our county says we need to step back. What do I do? I'm in the middle of summer library program. And I'm like, this is what you do. You make a phone call and we have a conversation. Um, I forgot to tell you the other place that if you, if you wanna share content from, BookFlix is available through <coughs> the state databases. So encourage your families to sign up for a Kansas library card and use those, um, use those options through the state databases because there are things there that you might have not uncovered yet. And maybe, maybe Christy and I will take a, take a tour through those. We've been talking about uh, making a video of that for, for um, users of all ages because we have something for everybody out there. 
Excellent. So, be awesome. Be your best. Stay well. Thank yes. you, ladies. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.